I think that you're on to something there. Um, maybe broadening that out is, let's recognize that most fables resonate deeply with people in the business community. So let me switch over to um, King Arthur, the Knights of the Round Table. So let's visualize what's going on there. You've got Sir Lancelot, you've got King Arthur, you've got the knights themselves. Different literature talks about a dozen knights, some talks about 13, some as many as 50. I don't know. I wasn't there. But let's envision that there were a dozen knights and King Arthur collect collectively together. Their attendants are there as well. There is this brotherhood that's formed. And they had this shared enterprise in common. And there's a genuine love, much like you find amongst your community. And while they're there, gathered at the round table, the Holy Grail mysteriously, transcendently comes down from the ceiling and it rests on the round table. And the knights and the king are transfixed by this moment, partly because of the beauty of the grail and partly because of its transcendent nature. They're fixed on this moment and as quickly as the grail arrived, mysteriously, it's gone. And I, I love the way that the author re weaves together several things that are very relevant for you and me. The brotherhood, the sharing of an adventure together, the proximity of lives being lived in community. I love all of that framework because it's where you and I live. But then the author takes us on a shared quest and that language resonates with us because we all love the nature of doing something extraordinary and with other people. And I love how that frames for you. I love that how, how that frames for our friends in other nations, in developing nations, a shared framework of love and of adventure, a quest. So these Knights, these noblemen, they gather and they have one purpose in, in common. They have this quest to bring, to, to find the grail and to return with it. And the author takes a moment then to describe how they had this mandate. And I think you've lived in this mandate as well. The mandate was, we're all going to enter the woods together, but we're going to enter the woods in this quest at the place that we recognize as the darkest entrance to the woods. I think that that theme has carried for centuries now. Risk, darkness, threat, fear. When? When it's time for our lives to propel forward to the impossible. When it's time for us to go on a quest, whether it be us individually or with our brotherhood or our sisterhood. So the fact that when you are attempting something new, when you are on a quest, when you are venturing out, the fact that there's fear is almost a prerequisite. There is no quest without entering into darkness. There is no hero's journey without finding yourself at that threshold where everything in you wants to turn around, but maybe just one thing in you compels you forward. 
So if you're trying to achieve anything extraordinary and you want to do it without the inconvenience of fear, history does not bear that out. Fear is cooked into the sauce. It's something that you need to accept. And if you can't accept it, then I don't think there's a quest. There's probably not a brotherhood. Life isn't that simple.